all right so good to be back welcome back to the channel my name is Satsun. in this video we're looking to build a times table in python all right so what we're looking to build is something like this all right so we can see here we have a times table size 10 and you can see we can look up the times table two by two is going to be a four four by seven is going to be a 28 six by eight is going to be a 48 so this is what we're looking to build right now all right so before we get into that i just want to remind you to hit that subscribe button leave a like leave a comment and this will help this channel in a long way all right so without much further ado let's jump into our tutorial all right so the first thing we need to determine is the size so we need a variable for the size and we can start with a size of eight uh, this is a random number you can start at whatever size you want and then the next thing is we need to understand how this works the way this works is we're going to use some kind of a loop construct to iterate and, and multiply the numbers and so we need loops right here so in python we can use for loops so that's what i'm going to use so i'm going to say for x in we're also going to use the built-in function range right here so let's say we want to loop eight times we can say range size right here what this does is going to loop eight times so let me print the x so that you guys can actually see what happened so if i'm to save and run you see down here this thing loops eight times but not necessarily up to eight right starting from zero and it loops all the way up to seven if you want to go up to eight of course you have to increase this number to nine and so if i'm to save and run you see down here it starts from zero all the way up to nine so the way the range function works it accepts three arguments uh, but one is required which is the end you can pass in the start where you want to start and you can then pass in where you want to end and then you can pass in the step this is how it works so let's say you want to start from four and you want to go all the way up to 12 um, and then you want a step of one so if you save and run you see here it's starting from four and going all the way up to 11. this is not included uh the end it, it just stops before the end so it's going to go up all the way up to 11 not all the way up to 12. if you want to go all the way up to 12 then you have to put this as 13 and so now you can see it goes all the way up to, to 12 but starting from four the step is one it's moving one step right each time four to five five to six if you want to change this you can always change this to two save and run you can see now it's moving two steps two six eight ten and twelve and so that's how it works but if you don't specify any of those it's going to default to a start of zero and of course you need the end this is what is required we can only specify the end and if we run this then it defaults to zero a step of one and it goes all the way up to nine uh, excluding the end right so that's how it works and so here we can pass in size for now and then we're good to go we also need an inner loop because we're going to multiply two numbers right so we're going to say for y in range of the same size one that size so what i want to do is here want to print outer because this is the outer loop and then in here want to print inner so that you guys can see what is happening let me reduce this size to about three the moment i reduce that size of course it affects here right uh, so that's the beauty about using variables and so we're printing outer uh, which is outer right here and then it gets to this line when it gets to that line it has to run this exact number of times three times one two three before it goes back to the outer loop so for each iteration of the outer loop you gotta run three times in the inner loop or whatever number of times that you specify here if you specify 10 times here then it's going to run 10 times before it goes back and then again it goes back and then again it goes back so this is a cycle before it goes to the outer so literally this is what is happening so we need that outer loop and uh, we need to nest these loops all right so the next thing we're going to do is so let's say i print x comma y let's see what this does so if i am to save and run you can see what is happening x is the outer loop y is the inner loop so initially x is going to be zero it's going to default to a start of zero so here it prints zero 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 three zeros because x is only going to change after this finishes iterating three times so we can leverage on this and then multiply x multiplied by y by the way we use this asterisk as a multiplication in python so we're going to say x multiplied by y and for run that you see it gives us uh, let me increase this number so that we can get something better five 
run that you can see what we're getting here of course we are getting zeros and then one two three four and then two four six eight and then three six nine twelve and then four eight twelve sixteen so if we want to eliminate the zeros we can start from one right here if i were to run this again now we, we eliminated those zeros we are one step closer we can now multiply but how do we get these in a formatted way we need to specify an end right here by default in a print function the end is always a new line but if we specify that we want a space look at what happens so if i save and run you see this is now being printed horizontally instead of vertically. So we're getting 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 4, 6, 8, 3, 6, 9, 12, and then 4, 8, 12, 16. We want to format this so we can then, after we finish the inner loop iteration, we can then print a new line right here. So the way we print a new line is by just using print. Print has an end, an end of new line it's a default value so we do not need to specify it. if we just say print then it's going to print a new line so if i save and run you can see what happened here so we are saying one two three four two four six eight three six nine twelve and four eight twelve sixteen and so if you print numbers like one two three four two four six eight in that order in a horizontal order then it's going to replicate that in a vertical order you can see one two three four two four six eight in that vertical order we're getting closer to the output that we need uh, we can change this for now let's say we want to go all the way up to 10 that's the beauty of variables if i run this you can see now not really the actual output that we're looking for so we need to do something extra that's where formatting comes in you could use f strings you could use the dot format method both are okay if you're not familiar with formatting in python i'll leave a link in the description i have a video on formatting or you can just check my previous video all right so here what we're going to do is we're going to use an f string here and there we use quotation marks and then curly bracket and then curly bracket and then quotation mark and we're going to specify a property called field width like that we can then come up here uh, after these numbers because this is where we are multiplying x times y right and then we can specify with a colon and then the spaces that we need or let's say four this is going to write a line by four spaces by default it's right aligned so if i save and write you can see the numbers have been right aligned moved to the right in a better format now you can see now we are getting our times table so basically this is how you create a times table so these are four spaces you can count actually one two three four those dots represent the spaces that we have yeah. so you could just now change this maybe you want up to eight so you can go up to nine and save and run you see here we have our eight our times table is the size of eight right here it's, it goes up to eight if you want to go all the way up to some kind of a big number you can also do the same but of course some numbers might not fit on your screen let's go to 15 and see what happens yeah so we're starting to have a problem here so we can reduce this to maybe a three and see what happens yeah and now it fits this one fits right here you can see we're getting all the way up to 14. if i want to go up to 15 i have to put a 16 right here and say we can get that 15. 15 by 15 is a 225 and it's working so basically this is how you create your time table important concepts you can take your time to understand what is happening here but you need to understand the building blocks of course variables how they work the range function how it works and the for loop if you nest it inside another loop how does it work formatting how does it work and of course the print function how does it work and all th those building blocks are going to help you understand what is happening here and you can build this cool project which is the times table all right so i am hoping that was uh, helpful if you find this video helpful leave a like leave a comment consider subscribing to the channel i hope to see you in my next tutorial for now i'm out bye bye